Hey, I'm Nate Wessel. I like building stuff and getting awesome. It's a multifaceted, badass, ramp building family man from another planet. He builds the skate parks and he is the crazy rider that just hucks the craziest gaps, looking as crazy as he possibly is with all of his dreadlocks. Some wild stuff comes out of his brain. That's what he's known for, is his creativity and his design. There is no question that Nate, in every project, stretches it to the max. He sees stuff that nobody else will see, and he's able to build stuff that no one else can build. He pushes his limits with everything. And as it rotates, your back wheel hits here and sends you into a front flip. We just built the biggest version of that that there is in the back at Travis's place. He's the Matt Hoffman of ramp building. Anything that you can imagine, that son of a gun, he's been through it. He can build anything and make any dream come true to a rider or an athlete that wants to do something that's going to change their sport. Who's Nate Wessel at the end of the day? I'm like, I'm nobody. You know, I'm just a guy that likes to ride bikes and build and stuff, you know, and people just go to the parks and ride them. Who cares who built it, you know? All right, the first couple things you're going to need. You're going to need a chalk line, hammer, some nails, tape measure. I always knew Nate is just like that bitchin' BMX guy that built awesome ramps in Chango World, you know? My first legit skate park I did was Chango World. And I had been building ramps already for like maybe six months because uh, I worked at Woodward Camp. It was 1995. Nate started like fusing ramps together and blending the wood together. It just gave it the feel of like a real dirt jump. All of a sudden, there's a wooden rhythm section in an indoor park like that didn't exist. And then from there, Tango World became a destination. If I said something about Cleveland, other pros that I knew, they were like, do you ever skate that chain of world? That, they have that rhythm section, it's insane. Like people were traveling from literally all around the world to go to Pachanga. That's what turned into the first indoor rhythm section in the world, I guess, I, I don't know. I just wanted to do something different that I'd never seen and just thought it was cool. And Joe Cup and Steve Luckett really got influenced by a lot of the stuff that was at the park and wanted to do section eight. They just wanted me to build it. Section 8 is kind of like that world in Super Mario Brothers where everything is three times bigger than it should be. We're just like, if, if we're going to build something, we're just going to build it way bigger than anybody else has done it. No other parks had a five and a half foot tall box jump, probably the biggest box jump in the country at the time. The box jump was bigger than the box jump at the X Games. At the time, that was the best skate park I had ever rode, ever, and probably to this day, still ever. I like to think that that was the first indoor bowl, wooden, open to the public. There was nothing that you could go, literally pay money, and ride an indoor bowl at that level back then when that was built. Yeah, I love you, Nathan. There was so many things that came into factor with why I started getting jobs. And a lot of that had to do with Changa World and Section 8. There was a poll that came out in a magazine, and this is a rider's poll. What are the top 10 skate parks? And number one was Changa. Nate had two parks that he had built on there. And Section 8 was on the list, too, but Chenga topped out all the parks. That told me I'm going to be a ramp builder the rest of my life. It's 1995. I started working at Woodward. Every job they ever put me at, I just I did it because all I wanted to do was stay there. The underlying talent that Nate is, he's, he's a true artist. And he's a true artist as it relates to the culture of these activities. And when you have that vision and you have that talent of what kids want to play on, that art is so important to this culture. Rideable art, which is a skate park or a bike park. And I pretty much pitched to Woodward and was like, oh, W is for Woodward, but it's Wesselbill. The thing that has fueled my designs the most was the level of riding I made it to. You know, I wasn't trying to do anything anybody else was doing. He was more just huck it, like go a thousand miles an hour at the thing and just launch yourself. That's how on his bike he got known. It was almost like a cult following for Nate. Um, if, if you're old enough to remember his style, you just knew like, the way he rode was pretty out of hand for his era. Not only does he know how to build ramps, but he can ride a bike too. And that's a huge part and probably the only reason that the ramps were so good because... I knew what the outcome was going to be after building it. Like, you're going to get to shred it, you know? He's a rider. He knows exactly what's good and what's not. 
because he's been there and he's done that on the ramps and stuff. He's progressive. He pushes himself hard to make something better than the last one that he built. It's been an awesome relationship because I've always wanted to keep doing stuff for Woodward my entire life. It's a, a company I believe in, and I hope I'm helping them grow. Got the opportunity to uh, design Woodward to Copper and Woodward Tahoe, you know, stuff that involves skiing, snowboarding, skateboarding, a little bit of everything. I've built every Woodward I've been at all the builds. We've done together a Copper Mountain, Colorado, Tahoe, China, a ton of stuff at Woodward East. You know, doing all these other jobs and traveling around, building parks and events and all these things. What made my career really go off was X Games. I got hired by X Games to design and build the, the street course and the park course and the vert ramp, which was awesome. And it really helped pave my path after I got X Games because of Chamber World in Section 8. I really feel that like where X Games was at, this is what stumbled into everything else that I'm doing in ramp building. Going through all these different kind of events, you know, like Backyard Build-Off happened, and it really showed and paid homage to those teams and the guys out there building. I've designed Simple Session for 10 or 11 years, I think. Hands down, one of my favorite events, just because it was so off camber and different. Framed Reactions worked out really cool because it was still big ramps and rad stuff, and we tried to use like elements of what was already in Amsterdam. We did Hot Wheels stuff, barrel rolled the car, uh, back flipped the car. I made a stunt happen that we broke a world record and went twice as far as they've ever went. We built like one of the craziest gyms in California for parkour stuff. I'm involved with the Tempest Freerunning Academy and they rent it out for like training for movies and films and stunts. And uh, it's pretty unique like how the whole place is built. There's a castle in there that, with a drawbridge. And we've done three gyms like that now, man. Uncontainable was crazy. Built some of the biggest ramps ever risky just to build some of the stuff and then watch our friend do some crazy stuff on it. So the coolest stuff ever. Just jumping off these containers and dropping like 25 feet in the landings and it was just awesome being a part of somebody's dream like that and making it become reality. Always nice of the CBs to let us use a Hummer. You've never been to a show anywhere where the guys are more appreciative that you're there trying to ride for them. I helped create Bikes Over Baghdad we seriously did something that's never been done before over in the Middle East for the soldiers. And after years of doing this, we became one of the most sought after shows in the military entertainment world. Seriously, it's changed my life. The first trip I won went on changed my life. Oh, my Welcome to Pastrana land. Woo! My favorite thing I think I do ever is just work with Travis in general. We're doing stuff that's never happened in life before. There's not really any ramp builders out there that are also riders. You can, there's a lot of great fabricators that can make you what you ask for. Unfortunately, what you ask for is rarely what you need. As you're building it, you need that eye, someone to say, ah, wait, hold up. This, this isn't gonna go right, you're gonna do this. I've done something similar, and Nate Wessel is that guy. He's the reason that Nitro has been able to succeed as well as it has. You know, Travis and I have been friends for a long time. He call anybody he wants to build whatever he wants, basically. And I just like, it freaks me out still to this day that he calls me and I'm stoked, you know? It's just like, it's just such an honor to build whatever he wants for him, you know? And it's just like, I love doing it. What I want, Trev, I want the trajectory of like where you're coming in at, you know? Yeah. I want the trajectory of like where you're falling from yeah. so we can match the angle of that by like maybe a couple degrees less. Yeah, yeah. And then like, I think we're gonna be golden. You could see all the testing and the airbags and stuff we got going on. And <laughs> you know, things are progressing very quickly now. The stuff we're doing with Travis is pretty much unreal. Like I would never thought we would see any of this stuff. And now it's just everything going so much bigger. And if you ask me, I think it's way better. But now we're working with jumps so steep and so big and the margin of error is so small, it, you can't mess up a lot. At the end of the day, that's the only reason that sponsors continue to believe in me, because we can pull this stuff off.
you know, looking at our family history, there's always been, you know, like a good carpenter in the Wessel family in one of the generations. You know, my dad was always like building stuff in our home and I'm that next Wessel carpenter. It's kind of neat, you know, that it's in our blood. Nate, I mean, just as a person, stays busy doing whatever. He's happiest when he's moving, and I mean, he has a lot of passion and love for everything he does. He really puts his heart into it. Whenever he is home and we're all here together, we are all about being together. He's the most in the moment, most sincere, most real person you've ever met. He's the most passionate person you ever met. And he's got this innate ability to get down to the core of things, whether it's what you're trying to do with the project or even emotionally. And I feel like that's a quality that it's rare to find in a human being. And I was very fortunate to find it in someone that helps me make my dreams and my passion come true. I want to keep creating. It's just like, it's my motivation daily, man. It's just like, hopefully you're putting smiles on kids' faces every day. You know, and you can't make everybody happy, but it's pretty cool to, you know, make something that so many people are happy using, you know?